but we wouldn't be hackers if we couldn't do anything about that or with that. So we thought how we can recycle this actually pretty cool hardware in a useful way. And uh, one of these ways uh, are transporters, um, those uh, autonomous or semi-autonomous transportation platforms uh, that can be used to carry stuff around. For example, uh, we used one of our working transporters to carry all the stuff to this room without any hassle. Maybe you can demonstrate uh, our working transporter and tell the people what you're doing. Yeah, um, the transporter consists of a um, wooden base and a special sensor which makes the transporter an actual transporter. You can already see that I'm holding to a string and this string, um, its length and its angle is encoded, therefore I can, or the transporter, can just follow me. Meaning, if I um, just walk around with my stuff carrying it, it will follow me without me needing to actually lift it or um, adds, uh, um, um, bring up some force to move it. So yeah, starting with the broken hoverboards, we uh, started to write our own firmware for the main boards. Uh, primarily, we did this to use the um, hardware to, do, uh, to build all kinds of moving objects, like bobby cars, you've already seen those, those are also running our firmware, um, and stuff like that. But later we thought, huh, maybe do something actually useful with those, um, because like driving around with bobby cars is fun, but it's not like the main application you use in your everyday life. So yeah, um, we came up with the transporters. And um, yeah, we are now at a point where the firmware is running pretty good and pretty stable, and people are actually starting to uh, build their own transporters, and that's uh, where we would like to help uh, with this talk. So uh, if you take apart a hoverboard, uh, this, is, this is what it looks from the inside. Um, you've got um, the battery, um, which is like this part. Um, you can recycle that for the transporter. You got uh, two sensor boards. This is the only part you can't recycle or you don't need to recycle because we don't need those. Um, we've got the main, the main board where we flash our own firmware to it. And we got uh, two pretty beefy motors um, that power the transporter. And um, if you don't want to buy a new hoverboard, um, you can get the hardware, as we uh, said earlier, um, broken. Um, usually the motors are robust enough, so they don't break. So if you get like a broken hoverboard from eBay or a Craigslist or something like that, uh, the motors are still fine. So uh, you can definitely do that. If you get a broken hoverboard um, where the motors are still working but the battery and the main board are dead, um, you can get those as replacement parts, for example, from AliExpress, also for pretty cheap. So I would say uh, you can get all the main hardware components like from the hoverboard, the mainboard battery and the motors for around about 50 euros um, if you really want to build one yourself. Um, yeah, uh, if you have a look at the hoverboard mainboard uh, where all the magic happens, we've got some interesting components. We have the main CPU, it's an STM32 ARM Cortex processor. Um, we have a DC-DC converter. Um, a linear regulator to um, provide some additional voltages. We will come back to this uh, regulator later in our talk because we need to uh, get some voltages from that. Um, we have uh, the MOSFETs for the main motor driver, some gate drivers for the MOSFETs, a piezo buzzer, which is more or less useful, depending on if you like annoying piezo buzzers. And we have some DC current shunts uh, to measure the torque of the motors. We also use those in our firmware to limit the torque of the motors and op arms to measure this. And uh, now we come to the connectors, which you may also find useful to build your own transporter. Uh, we have the connector for the power button. Uh, we use this button uh, to power on and off the transporter. Um, we have uh, the main XT60 uh, cable, it's that one, uh, that's used to power the main board and everything from the original battery. We have uh, the main motor wires, uh, which go to the motor. Um, we have a charging connector. You can use this to like charge your uh, transporter. We have SVD programming. This is a port that is originally not used by the hoverboard, so we will have to solder on our own connection to this port later. And this is used to flash our own firmware to the main board because um, we need to override the original hoverboard firmware to make a transporter out of it. Um, then we have um, the hall cable connections. Those go to the uh, corresponding motors. 
and we have two sensor board connections. Um, as I said earlier, we don't need the sensor boards that are used in the original hoverboard. Instead of those uh, sensor connections, we attach our own sensors. Um, for example, the game drug. Uh, we will come to back to this later, what it is and what it does. Um, but it's used to like track um, the operator. And to the other sensor board or connector, you can, for example, attach a, w a Wii nunchuck to um, control the transporter uh, while you are sitting on it. Um, yeah, um, okay. maybe and Henrik can tell you something about how to build your transporter and the parts you need for that. Okay, um, after Niklas told you now something about the hoverboard hardware used to build one, we will now get to the part where you actually build one. Um, small introduction, what a transporter is, you probably already know it, but um, it's a personal um, transportation platform which can carry a weight of up to 100 kilograms, probably more, um, but um, we have never car carried much more with it. And um, since December last year, we have also an advanced version, which um, allows you to control it with a nunchuck on the fly. So you don't need to modify your hardware, you can just plug in a nunchuck and it will work with a nunchuck. With mm. a software upgrade, of course. Yeah, with a software upgrade. <laughs> Um, for the tools, you only need some very basic tools to build your own transporter, which is pretty nice, mm, like a cordless drill or a huxa. Um, if you do, if you want to do something more, like uh, want to do a very fine build, you can also um, you will also need a CNC mill or a sheet metal bender, but you won't need uh, that to to get a basic transporter up and running. Um, yeah, the most important part that you probably don't have at home if you have like a basic workshop setup is the programmer. We need to flash um, the hoverboard and that's an ST-Link version 2, but you can get those on AliExpress for like two euros. So that's something you would need to buy, but probably you already have the rest of uh, the stuff at home. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. And um, for the uh, building materials you need, um, you of course need one compatible hoverboard hardware, meaning, for example, a new hoverboard or a broken ones with all the broken parts replaced. Um, new hoverboards you can get already for about 80 euros. And as Niklas said, if you wa really want to go low cost, you can get the parts probably for 50 euros. And um, additional, the, the only rare part um, is the game truck sensor, which can be obtained from a game truck. Um, you will need to buy that from eBay because these game trucks, um, they're not available anymore. These are augmented reality devices from a PlayStation from about 2000, around about 2004. So they are quite old, uh, not super old, but you cannot buy them new anymore. Uh, luckily, they um, are widely available on eBay or Craigslist. Uh, such a game truck usually does not cost more than a euro. Uh, but shipping is expensive because it, uh, it has some weights added so that you don't uh, pull up your, your um, game track while playing golf, argument reality golf. So yeah, maybe, maybe now is the time to show it. Um, it worked like um, this here, two of these sensors in a game track. And these sensors have like a um, string attached to them which can be pulled out. It's, um, um, oh, oh, it's um, it has a, um, some tension to it, so it will always uh, always um, try to go back to the game track sensor. And the length and all the angles of the string are measured in the sensor. So you uh, can see it here. Um, it's a standard uh, joystick. You can uh, you can find in nearly every cheap device you uh, get from China with a joystick. And the joystick has a hole drilled in it uh, where the string is fed through. So the uh, angel, uh, angle of the string uh, can be measured. Uh, all, val val all values um, are present on the connector as analog values, so we um, later need to connect these to the analog input, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. Um, additionally to that, you need also a wooden base. Uh, we usually choose one with a size of 600 by 400 millimeters because that's um, the size of two beverage crates, which is pretty useful. 
It's like mm. a typical Euro norm also for uh, boxes, shopping shopping boxes, or like probably in your hacker space, you know, like uh, our, our boxes. It's like a pretty famous ca uh, packaging company, which also does boxes. Like this is, this is like one of those Euro boxes, and you can put two of those next to each other on the transporter. That's why we chose this size. Mm -hmm. Um, additionally to, to that, you only need some uh, two swivel coasters for the front uh, wheels, some screws. And if you want to do uh, something more, you also uh, can add a nunchuck, an I2C display, like the typical uh, 16 by 2 displays with an I2C backpack. Uh, yeah, and some glamour. We uh, lasered an otter on ours. We don't need to do that, but uh, it will no, make... 3D the printed parts are also oh optional. Yes. And we'll make the transporter your transporter, uh, obviously. Mm. Okay, um, to get started, let's guess we have bought a whole hoverboard, because that's the easiest uh, way. Um, we need to disassemble it. We need the motors and the uh, aluminum frame for the uh, me mechanical parts, and later, of course, uh, the battery and the main board. Mm. Yeah. And the main board. And um, to create some really easy um, motor mounts, you can just simply um, cut the, um, the main board into. Uh, not the main board. Uh, not the main board, sorry. The, the aluminium casting into uh, smaller pieces and screw the pieces onto the transporter. Um, like this. Uh, it's, it's uh, this aluminium is um, probably the cheapest aluminium you can get. Um, sawing it with a hacksaw takes about 30 seconds, which is incredible fast. Um, after drilling some holes uh, into the mainboard um, and probably flatten it, um, our first aluminium castings had a little um, slope on it, so I had to uh, flatten it with a... Um, um, with, 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 um, uh, with a grinder, yes. Um, you can already um, screw them to the main board and you have uh, like some super sturdy motor brackets. Again, if you want to do something more fancy, you can use a CNC mill to mill motor brackets. We have some cut files. I don't know if we have yeah, pushed them to GitHub. Um, then you can uh, also build a transporter. For example, like this, it's like a bit smaller if you drill your own um, aluminum plates, but yeah, it's more effort. Um, whatever works for you. Okay, um, and one very important thing that you need to do is deburr all the aluminium parts. Um, the Chinese people didn't do it in the first hoverboards we um, opened. We bought uh, defective online. Um, the main problem was, or one of the main problem was that um, um, edges were not deburred, so cables shorted out, and the main board was defective. Uh, the hoverboard was defective, therefore we could buy them very cheap. And um, you better do that, so you don't kill your transporter right ahead. Uh, after that, you can already add some motors. We use the original uh, brackets, of course. Uh, also, for every other build we did, we always use the original brackets because it's the easiest, easiest way to do, and it's a very sturdy. Uh, after that, you can already add the uh, casters. Um, we usually buy the cheapest ones for transporter, which costs on eBay about one euro fifty, which is my way too cheap for for some casters, but they seem to work out for uh, larger builds or. Uh, platforms for um, higher loads, uh, we don't recommend those. <laughs> but they will work out for a normal transporter. Uh, also, you have to take care um, on the image. Um, this is our first transporter. Uh, these are images from our, from our first transporters we have built. And those broke uh, after some time because we used um, some super cheap um, wood which is not like multiplex or uh, layered wood it was uh, just plain um, uh, wooden planks and uh, these tend to break with the um with the wooden um it's called uh, the wooden grate uh, or the grating in the wood so uh, if you screw in the screws don't screw them uh, in um, with too much tension or you will end up like uh, like we did with uh, breaking wood 
or just use high quality uh, multiplex plywood. Yeah. Uh, back to the game truck. The uh, game truck unit half, uh, half disassembled uh, look, looks like this. Um, you can see the weights in there and of course the sensor. Um, the sensor is um, actually not screwed in into the um, game truck, it's just plugged in so you just have to um, open up the game truck and pull out the sensor. It's actually pretty important that you don't try to uh, unscrew it by opening uh, these screws because uh, the wire is spring-loaded and if you open these screws and try to disassemble the unit, you will end up with an exploding uh, string, uh, an, an exploding spring uh, because it's like uh, spring-loaded and if you open it, the spring will just explode and there's no way, like no way to ever get a spring back in here. So. Uh, yeah, don't do that. It's just plugged in, and after you unscrew the main case, you can just remove it. Uh, maybe that's an interesting side note, yeah. because we had bad experience with <laughs> springs flying through the room. So, yeah. mm, After pulling it out, you can just um, cut the cable uh, and trash the rest of the game truck, because we, you, won't need or you won't need it anymore, and there's no magic to it. It's um, in the game truck. There's, an, I think it was USB or UART to analog um, converter PCB thingy, and somebody also also reverse engineered the protocol, but I'm not very sure about it. So you can probably reuse re reuse it as an uh, analog front end for your computer, but no, you don't really need it. So you can tra trash the rest of the game truck and no. only use the sensor. Um, and now we can already uh, get to preparing the mainboard for flashing. Yeah, I think uh, we prepared some sli slides for that as well, uh, in case the tech, uh, uh, the the stuff doesn't work out. But uh, I think we have everything set up, so it's a bit cooler to have like a live demo of what to do. Uh, maybe Jan Henrik can assist me with filming. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, my mouse pad broke again, but that's not a problem. I have touch. Okay, let's see. Uh, no. Doesn't work. Oops. <laughs> that usually fixes my touchpad. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry for that. Yeah, now it's working again. <laughs> let's hope that everything else also. We only have a mouse, that's not that good. Oh, come on. Uh, sorry for the interruption, um, but I think we got it working again. Yeah, it's the wrong environment. Do we have a picture again? Yes, yes. excellent. Okay, um, so let's see if we can get low there. Uh, the we don't have a USB webcam, so we have to use the phone. Um, and, ah, it's working, excellent. So, yeah, uh, Jan Henrik, can you <laughs> assist me with filming? Ah, it's <laughs> upside down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the connector is not um, soldered in uh, because uh, in the factory um, the board is programmed like just by holding it uh, to the pads. So the first thing we need to do to reliably be able to program the main board is to soldering uh, a standard pin header where we can attach, attach um, jumper wires to it. And because we can't access the back of the PCB, that's a bit tricky. Um, so the way um, we usually do this is to um, use the pin header, not in the way it is intended to, to solder it in like this. But we first solder it in upside down, like this. So uh, let's see. Yeah, we can probably see it in a second. It's a bit bended. Also, the image quality is not that good. 
So, so okay, we, we plug it in upside down. Um, maybe you can focus on it, yeah. Uh, maybe you can see it, it's now uh, inside the upside down than usual. And um, this way you have some more space to solder on the pin header. Uh, I will try to do that while Jan Henrik is filming, which adds additional uh, effort. So yeah, now we have some space to uh, solder in the pin header. Uh, just make sure that you don't short anything while doing so. So now that it is soldered in, we can like uh, push down the plastic a bit so we have longer pins to attach our jumpers to it. Uh, so now this is done. Um, we already assembled like all the main parts we've seen on the slides. So the motor brackets are already screwed down. Uh, all the connectors are probably uh, properly connected. And uh, fixed with super professional, professional cable, cable ties. So basically you just connect everything back as in your original hoverboard. The only difference are the sensor wires. Uh, the one sensor wire is uh, a bit shorter because it's the one uh, with the sensor that is in the side where also the mainboard is. And we can use that later to connect the nunchuck. Uh, we don't need this for now. The other sensor cable is a bit longer and uh, looks like this. And uh, we have to do some modifications to connect it to the game track because uh, yeah, it doesn't fit very well. So we have to solder on these wires as well. Um, before we do this, we have something else important. Um, the thing is that um, the, um, the sensor cables are powered by 15 volts. So uh, there's 15 volts coming out of this cable. However, we are using this 15 volts to power the game track sensor, and the ca game track sensor can on only be powered by 3.3 .3 volts. So you have two options now. You can either connect an external voltage um, a regulator to create these 3.3 .3 volts, and an easier way, however, is to just use um, the 3.3 volts that are already available on uh, the main board. And one way to obtain these 3.3 volts is uh, using the upper pin of the pin header because there are 3.3 volts um, present from the sensor. So what we do now is we take the red wire from the sensor board, the 15 volts, and cut it because we don't volt want the 15 volts. We remove the isolation. Add some soldering to it, and now we can connect it to the uppermost pin of the jumper. Just make sure that you don't uh, apply too much soldering uh, um, um, soldering wire all the way up to the top, because then you ca can't uh, put the jumper for programming on there, but we don't need that anyway. So yeah, just solder that on there, and make sure it is sturdy enough. So now we have um, our sensor wire prepared with 3.3 .3 volts coming out of it. And um, the way this works is you got a black that is ground, you have red, this is 3.3 .3 volts, and you have two additional wires, and uh, those are the analog inputs for the main board. And as Jan Hendrik told you earlier, uh, the game track uses potentiometers um, as a voltage divider. So if you apply 3.3 .3 volts, you get a voltage of zero to 3.3 .3 volts out of it, depending on the length and the angle of the, of the joystick. So um, next thing we need to do is uh, to solder on this connector to uh, the wires of the game track uh, accordingly. And uh, for this, it's maybe a good idea to go back to the slides because I forgot the pin out. Um, and also then you can see uh, what we are talking about. So uh, yeah, we've done all these steps. Uh, uh, we have the pin header soldered in. Uh, we have the 3.3 .3 volts attached. I have no idea why the camera is trying to get my attention. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, now it's time to uh, connect the game track to it. Um, maybe we've got a good picture of that. Yeah, yeah, we can. No. Nee, da war das drüber. Okay. Let's see if we got a good picture for that. Davor. Maybe I've skipped. Ah, yeah. This uh, is the interesting picture. 
Um, so the color coding of these game tracks always seems to be the same. Same goes for the hoverboard uh, cables. So uh, the easiest way to connect uh, those two is by color. Um, if you happen to have a different color code, um, just look up how they are connected to the game track. Uh, you can usually um, see pretty well what of the uh, cables is ground and what of the signals is VCC because there are some capacitors on the PCB. So if you look at those and uh, just uh, track the wires, um, you can find out easily what the pinout is for you. So uh, there are five wires coming out of this. Uh, as I said, uh, ground, VCC, and free analog values because this is uh, three dimensions of freedom sensor. We only need two because we only want to know the difference and uh, um, the distance and the angle. So we can cut the red wire. We don't need that. And yeah, next is to uh, remove the isolation at all the other wires. Um, like that. Also, don't forget heat shrinking tube like we did on the picture. <laughs> yeah, we had to redo <laughs> that, I think. By the way, where's our heat shrink tubing? Ah, oh, it's down there. Maybe on the floor. Can you get it from there? <laughs> so, yeah, ups and downs of a live demo. Um, but yeah. Uh, our intention was that uh, we might miss some points uh, if we just show you slides and uh, doing it live, we can see if we get magic smoke or not and uh, tell you uh, what to um, watch out for. So, yeah, I can't really remember those, uh, those pin out, so I will just prepare like three of the wires and then we can switch back to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm now tinning all the cables. Uh, nothing interesting here. Uh, you probably all know that already. Just apply some soldering iron, uh, uh, some, some solder. solder to the cables before you connect them. And then we got uh, red to brown and green, orange. green to orange. And I think we can do the other two live. What is it? Black to green. I can remember that. So it's still running. Okay, so uh, I connected those two wires. Uh, next one is black to green. As we said earlier, connect the heat shrink tubing and then uh, solder it to the corresponding wire. By the way, all this documentation, you don't need to remember the slides. We have a pretty well documented uh, documentation online uh, where you can look up all the pictures and everything we said so far. So uh, yeah, no need to remember everything we say uh, or show. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Wouldn't it be easier to print a new uh, plug? Uh, yeah, that's also possible. Uh, but then you need to get uh, the connectors for it and everything. Uh, so also the cables are a bit thicker um, and the connector style is very different. So I'm not exactly sure how well that would work. But in theory, it should be possible, yes. But usually you have a soldering iron right in place. Uh, so yeah, now I attach the, the heat shrinks and we can just shrink them all down a bit. So um, yeah, I can just continue with building the transporter. Now we have the game track connected and um, it should work already. Um, so we can already screw that down. Um, you can just uh, screw the game track down uh, to the front of your transporter like this. However, the analog electronics it's pretty sensitive, so we highly recommend to 3D print a part that protects everything. Um, we even have a hole, hole for the cables in it, and I forgot to plug the cables in it in uh, before, so I will just <laughs> cut this open because uh, I fucked up at that. Because now you can uh, just have the cables in here, and I think it assembles like this. Ah, uh, yeah you get all the cables in there and yeah like this 
Uh, so now you don't have to worry about the sensitive uh, potentiometers. So in theory, now you could just screw it down. Uh, however, some other mistakes we made earlier, um, as we said, this uh, thing is spring-loaded, so we have this rotary screw to uh, set it up. And if you screw it right to the uh, wooden plate uh, with screws, um, you would like block the screw. So uh, it would, wouldn't uh, go as easy as it does right now. So um, to prevent this, um, it's highly recommended to use some washers um, to add some additional distance between the game truck and the board. So that might also be a common mistake. Do you know what the third one is? Yeah, I, I think three should work as well. Uh, please use four. Uh, mm. We only have those for now. And now you can just screw it to the wooden plate like that. Um, yeah, next thing uh, would then be to flash the firmware because uh, if you got the main board from like an original hoverboard, um, it has uh, some completely different firmware. And uh, to change that, uh, you need a programmer we mentioned earlier. So yeah, now this is connected um, also electrically. And uh, now is the time to uh, bring life to your transporter. Uh, for that, you need one of those ST links. And I think um, now it's a good point to go back to the slides again. And I hope we don't need the camera again. So yeah, it was already there. So now we connected the game track um, and screwed it down with the washers. We have the uh, plate assembled. And the battery, of course, needs to be fixed in place, uh, plate. And for the battery, we highly recommend to use some protection. So um, for the whole electronics, we highly recommend to add some protection, um, like um, some screen. We added uh, a metal sheet to that transporter. Um, so no dirt or even fluids uh, can get to the electronics, especially the battery, or especially the main board. Um, so um, you should consider that. And for the batteries, you will usually use an original hoverboard battery. Then everything is fine. They have some great protection circuitry, um, some short protection circuitry even. And um, also the battery um, is consists of 18650 type cells, which are quite sturdy. So uh, that is fine. For other cell types, like uh, flat pack batteries, um, high, um, very common in the... Um, drone and uh, hobbyist community, we recommend to use a um, uh, balancer or BMS, an external. Uh, we did that uh, for another project, this is the Otter adapter, it's just a BMS connecting to uh, 16 ampere hour flat pack batteries, because if you shot them, they are highly dangerous. And we don't want to, uh, we don't want that as we sit usually on these batteries. Um, but as I said, you don't need that if you use hoverboard hardware. You already have that. And uh, of course, you al also have to screw um, your mainboard to the um, uh, base plate. Nothing special there. It has four screw holes um, for its original uh, mounting. Um, if you um, actually um, screw in these um, motor brackets without like big nuts or um, um, uh, out, sticking, uh, out sticking screws. You can also screw in the uh, mainboard back into the motor bracket. That also fits. Um, but uh, we usually just screw it to the wood with some uh, short wood screws. And you can see on this image, um, we added some wooden bars to it and later screwed on a uh, sheet of plexiglass to protect everything from water and dirt. And uh, also like uh, small stones uh, which already killed the mainboard uh, by hitting uh, a capacitor and destroying it. Okay, uh, back to flashing. So yeah, um, as, as we said earlier, you need a small um, programmer. You can get those very cheap. It looks like a USB stick and it has some pin header connections on the back. And uh, you only need uh, three connections for this. Uh, it's ground, SVDIO, and uh, SVClock. That's the programming protocol. Um, you may can see the connection pattern on this picture. Um, if not, um, as I said, all these slides are online and uh, at the beginning of the presentation we had the pinout, so you can look that up um, in the beginning. I will just uh, 
connect those three wires to the pin header we just soldered on. Um, that should be like that. And um, yeah, is there anything other interesting? Yep. Um, we need a, a steady power supply for flashing. Um, you can just use an, um, not the battery, but a, a lab power supply for safety if you want. But um, you should never use a lab power supply while running the motors. Should you should keep that in mind because um, running the motors is not the problem, but breaking the motors generates energy, which has to be pumped back into the uh, power supply, and the lab power supply usually cannot uh, cannot um, uh, accept energy from uh, the device it supplies, while the battery can do that. So yeah, if you if you have the setup running on a lab bench power supply for testing, and you break uh, heavily because of a fault or because you um, yeah, want to break fast, it may happen that you kill your mainboard and your power supply. So usually it's the safest to just use a standard hoverboard battery, um, but you can also use a lab bench power supply if you keep in mind what we said earlier. Also, um, you might be tempted to connect the 3.3 volts from the ST-Link to the mainboard because there's a connection for that, but we do not recommend that because uh, the STM on the mainboard should be powered only by the mainboard and not by an external power supply like the ST-Link because this can also cause some problems. So, um, is there something else? Yeah, and uh, for flashing later, uh, you have to keep in mind that you ha uh, um, have the power button pressed or uh, uh, bridged. I will talk about that while okay. I do it. So uh, yeah, let's show you live um, how. Yeah. No, I don't need that. Uh, let's show you how we. Uh, how do I get out of this presentation? How to flash the transporter? And uh, for this, it's the easiest to go to our GitHub repo um, to get the software. Um, you can compile the firmware yourself. Uh, there's a transporter branch of the hoverboard firmware hack, and uh, you can edit things in the config, for example, if you want a different battery configuration or want to change anything else. Uh, this is possible if you just want a working transporter and don't want to build the firmware yourself. You can also uh, use our uh, pre-built binaries, and uh, you can just download those uh, as well. And uh, you can see that there are quite a lot of binaries um, that you can choose from. Those are pre-compiled for different motor configurations. For example, uh, at some binaries the right motor is inverted, at some the left motor is inverted, for some both motors are inverted. So depending on how you mount your motors and what motors there are, um, this way you can uh, fix the driving behavior without um, modifying anything. But for now I will just extract them all. Uh, into a folder like that and uh, for flashing you need um, the ST-Link utility um, that's the software you can get um, from um, GitHub um, it's uh, for Linux if you want to use Linux for Windows there are other tools uh, you can find all this in our wiki uh, where there's also this tutorial uh, where most of the pictures are from so there's also like where to solder in the connections and this is the place to look out for if you want to build your own transporter. And at the very bottom, there are also the commands you need and the tools you need um, to get all the software to flash the transporter. For now, I will uh, copy this command because we need it for flashing. And now we should have all our firmwares in here. Um, you may need root to uh, use the programmer because it communicates with external hardware and also this path is wrong because it is the path uh, if you use, if you compile the firmware for yourself. So for testing, the first thing you do is to flash the default um, firmware and um, yeah, there are some things to notice. Uh, I already connect the, the J-Link, now I can just plug it into USB um, and now the important thing is to connect the battery and you have to hold the power button all the time during programming, so uh, else it won't work. So I press the button, keep it pressed, and now I can type in my root password. Oops. And now it's flashing. Ah, sometimes it needs a second attempt. Yeah, and now, now it's basically flash with the transporter firmware, and that's how to break your hoverboard if you ever want to use it again as a hoverboard, because it's impossible to um, yeah, reconstruct uh, the hoverboard firmware. So this now will forever be a transporter and never hoverboard again.
because he just simply don't have the original firmware. So, um, yeah, we have the firmware uh, loaded to the main board. We have the game track connected. So now it's time to test it and see if everything works. And you can see one of the motors is spinning perfectly fine. The other one, not so much. It's blocking very badly. And this is a common mistake that can happen if you mess up the motor connections. Um, usually, it's fine to just connect the motors by color, so they all have different colors. However, uh, because the uh, Chinese hardware is not very consistent, it can happen, especially if you replace the main board, the color, that the color code does not match to the motor connection. So if something like that happens to you, you just have to cycle through all the possible conf conf um, combinations. I think it's nine in total to try that out. Yeah. Um, so now we can see both motors are spinning. However, I'm driving straight forward and one of the motors is operating in the wrong direction. So now is the time to change that by simply use, I forgot the names of the binary, by simply using the, let's try R inverted. Again, press the button and try it a second time and see if it now works. That goes back. Okay, so now both motor directions are correct. The other thing you have to test is if the steering is correct, because depending on uh, what way you mount your game track, it might steer in the wrong direction. So if I go right, this motor has to go faster to compensate for that. So this looks good. If this is not correct, you can use the game track inverted. So now the transporter is uh, flashed. Everything looks operational. We have some parts falling out of it. That's also usual. And now, yeah, you have a working transporter. Uh, to use it, you can use the power button to change the length of the string. So by pressing it once, you are adding half a meter or I think a quarter meter to the length. So I think now it should be a bit longer. And um, it will also be saved. So next time you turn it on, it will again have this length. And to turn it off, it's a bit tricky. You have to press the button t uh, two times. So that it switches off like this. And yeah, that is your working transporter. <laughs> Let's see if we have anything interesting in the slides. Yeah, that's one of the slides. Um, Have we? Okay, let's go through this fast ah. because we don't have any we'll time have to start left. The presentation again. Yeah, I've already done that. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, we will do it like that. Okay. Um, first part of how you use it, Niklas just told you. Um, some known problems, um, the transporter, or the main boards in general, can be turned off with a very low battery um, voltage. That's due to a hardware problem in the main board. It uses a uh, self-latching circuitry, with, um, which also, also allows you to read the button and not just plain turn it off. Um, so you have to keep uh, track of the voltage. And people are running through the string. If it is too long, we have no solution to that. So. Uh, you have to uh, be a little bit careful um, with thinking about illuminating the string so people can see it. Um, that's one, of one very common problem, which is hard to solve. And I guess that concludes our talk. Any questions? <laughs> no questions. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Jan, Henrik, and Niklas, for this awesome talk. Um, you inspired a lot of people, including me, so I will watch your talk and I will try to build one. And of course, come to Warp Zone, your hackerspace in Münster, Yay. where yep. we can build uh, transporters together. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, please give it up, Jan mm -hmm. Henrik and Niklas Fout. Uh Yeah, are there any questions? No, no, okay. We have time. Ah, okay. <laughs>